Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to another TW video. We are going for our version of our Mae Young Classic. We've opted to give it this name, taking it away from the War of the Women's Championship. I just feel with the tournament that will be taking place with the WWE, it would be fitting if we also pay tribute to a legend um, in the industry that Mae Young was and we name the title and the tournament in her honour. We've got 16 of the top women's athletes competing in this. A couple of women, as you saw in the preview show, um, haven't made the cut. So it's just 16 that I feel are the strongest. Uh, we will have one debutante from NXT. And then we will have a lot of, well, top athletes really competing to see who is the top female competitor in the roster. Uh, and also to ensure we do a game pop, we do have a five-on-five -five main event match with the top guys in the company just to get that good rating although there's no saying that our final couldn't get a great, great rating and, and give us a plus of points as well and of course we've got just little filler bits as well to keep the roster happy we've got a six-way cruiserweight match and a fatal four-way tag team match but we'll crack on with the show i hope you guys enjoy it and let's see who gets our prediction correct this is the wwe may young classic for 2019 so we're in front of two thousand, sorry, twenty-two thousand four hundred fifty-seven at the B B and T Center in Florida. Just felt like close to full sale being in Florida, and of course we're not going to fill. We're going to fill that many, many times over. So I'm probably going to look to build another arena in Florida, I'm gonna make it like a WWE Center, something else they've got local, uh, just because as say as popularity gains in the US, we'll be getting far greater than twenty-two thousand in attendance. So we start off. Um, so the hype video to start the the tournament off. And it basically has the group of Sasha Banks, Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Bailey, um, basically hyping up the start of the Women's Revolution, which would have happened back in 2015 now, I believe. It's been quite a while. And just saying, women started basically coming into prominence um, then within the company. And now they have all these top athletes, and we're going to crown the best of the best in this elite tournament. So a disappointing C63, but it gets the crowd hotter, and it's just a nice little introduction to the show. We then start with the sisterhood coming out, the team, of course, of the Raw Women's Champion, Melissa, alongside her lackeys, or friends, however you wish to call them, Abby Leif and Nicole Matthews. They're basically saying, well, Nicole is not in the tournament today. Either Abby or Melissa will be the one to win it and take the championship to the sisterhood. So a B78, it got the crowd hotter as we get ready for our opening match. So there are 16 women, so eight matches in the first round. Let's fire through them. So the opening contest was about between Becky, eh, sorry, AJ Lee and Abby Leif, and it was about they had decent wrestling, but it didn't have much heat as I saw AJ Lee defeat Abby Leif in 9.23 with the slice bread number 2. So a C plus 67, a good win for AJ. One of the sisterhood is gone already. In terms of in-ring performances, AJ was a little bit better. And yeah, no, real, no negatives at all there. Decent opening match to the show. Of course, these ratings won't be as high as usual because some of the female athletes aren't quite um, at that elite level yet. But that's the aim, to get them there. Next up, we've got a hype video for our NXT debutante, Nikki Cross. She gets an E plus 30 as she makes her way to the WWE Universe. She's going to show just how mental she is, how crazy she is. And her opening match, a decent wrestling, a little heat, but it saw Nikki Cross defeat Baton Royce in a bit of an upset in 8.48 by using the ropes for leverage. C63, Nikki Cross with a 46, a 62 for Peyton Royce, but we're going to build up Nikki and we'll maybe give her a bit more of an angrier face because she is mental uh, in WWE or in NXT, I should say. Next up in a decent matchup, Charlotte defeated Sienna Allison in 12.19 by pinfall. This was a C plus 70. Charlotte with 69 to Sienna's 55. The Queen advances to the second round, so good win for her not to be this year for Sienna Allison. Next up, Triple H is out, and he has announced that returning from injury to take part in the tournament today is, of course, Dana Brooke, one of the most over females we have in the company, one half of the Shine Tag Team Champions. She's out. Triple H did a great job there as Dana returns for her matchup. Dana Brooke takes on Bailey. And it was a decent matchup, which saw Dana defeat Bailey in 10.59 with a Simone Driver, a B-71. And this is with these ladies not clicking, making it an awkward bout. 
which would have mean that Bailey and Dana would have had higher ratings, and maybe have seen this into a B matchup. But overall, pretty good. Could Dana Brooke be the one that somehow wins this championship and just goes on to be the first ever 90th overness female? Time will see. Next up and about, they had some great wrestling and it had good heat. And it saw Kellyanne English defeat Mia Yim. So the SmackDown Women's Champion has been defeated by one of the number one contenders at 1215 with a roaring bicep, a B78 there. It continues the storyline. I'll be honest, if that storyline had a bit more heat with the ratings that they've performed with an 85 and a 79, that could have done even better. So a good matchup between them. Yep, the storyline. Low heat probably cost that from maybe even being a B plus. So good performances there. Probably one of the hotbeds where Mia Yim has more overness than usual. Next up, another good matchup. So this is pleasing, a B80. And about they had some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Melissa defeated Billy Kay in 10-12 with the Air Raid cl uh, crash. B80 is good. Two solid performances there. A good showing from B Billy Kay. So that could maybe see something good for the future for Billy Kay, but Melissa, one half of the sisterhood, or one third, sorry, but the only one of the two that's taken part, that's going to make it to the second round. And then a decent matchup, we've got Becky Lynch defeating Chris Wolf in 11.53 by half marks, a B-71. Becky's not really won a lot lately, so her popularity took a bit of a hit, so she's only got a 68. Chris Wolf for a 58 as we build her up. A good win, and the last kicker advances to round number two. Uh, next up and about, they had some great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. We had Paige defeat last year's winner, Sasha Banks, in 12.22 with the Rampage, a B80. A very good performance here, considering that Sasha Banks is obviously struggling with an injury, which is affecting her in-ring performance, so that could have possibly been a, a B+. Plus. No skill improvements, and as you see with the dirt sheet, that's the only negative there, so that little injury that she's got that she can still work through. Uh, the reason why she doesn't win in the first round and why this doesn't get a B plus. So Paige in to round number two. So that's our first round complete. We had a cruiserweight championship match, and it was just a little glimpse of the talent we've got in 205 Live. And it was about to had some great wrestling and good heat where Grand Metalik defeats Akira Tozawa, Karistiko. King Neville, Manny Andrade, and Aero Boy in 11.41 when Grand Metalik defeated Aero Boy with a spring of Dragon Rana, making the third defence of the Cruiserweight title. So a B82 there, a lot of good performances. Um, Metalik, Azawa, and Neville, all the 84s. Karistico with a, an 80. The storyline gained some heat. As I say, more than likely we'll run with Grand Metalik for a bit longer. A lot of guys from 205 are going to be moving roster. Um, I don't want to limit them to just the cruiserweight division, like real life. Um, they've obviously limited Austin Aries, wasn't allowed to move out it, so that's probably the reason why I left. So um, we're going to let guys flourish. If we feel they've outgrown 205 Live, they will move to Raw or SmackDown, and as I say, other cruiserweights will come in from either NXT, um, or just maybe for someone we can get to you know, lose a bit of weight, drop to 205 at a lightweight, we'll bring them in. Now the second round, I made the bout that had some decent wrestling but didn't have much heat and it saw AJ Lee defeat Nikki Cross in 8-10 by pinfall with a slice bread number 2. So the NXT debutante got to the second round but it was AJ with a win. She was off her game here in a C65. A big increase in, popularity, uh, in performance from Nikki Cross. So I'm hoping that results in a bonus popularity boost for her. But the win is the AJ Lee. She advances to the semi-finals. So good win. For AJ Lee there against Nikki Cross. Next up, about they had some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. The Queen Charlotte defeated the Raw Women's Champion Melissa in 11.54 by pinfall, a B82. Charlotte with just a 68 performance, Melissa with a 79. And the shocking thing is, both your Raw Women's Champion and your SmackDown Women's Champion are both eliminated by halfway through the second round. So who could win this tournament, granting them a championship match of their choice, more than likely at Survivor Series. So I'm noticing there's not a lot of storylines going at the moment. I hope you guys don't mind that. As I say, that will more be a pay-per-view thing. 
as I say, the plan is eventually one day when we get to the close to WrestleMania, I might look at writing out every Raw and SmackDown in the month leading up to the, those kind of feuds. So we'll keep that in mind and we'll see as we go along. Also in the semi, the quarterfinals, about they had some good wrestling, a decent reaction from the crowd. There's Kelly and English defeated Becky Lynch in 1357 with a roaring bicep, B79. Kelly Ann's looking as dominant as ever, really, really has came on strong since making the main roster. Becky not successful on this day. The only negative is Becky's and consistency. But good rating there, B79. I say the plan is we will get these women athletes to start bringing the A plus matches. We will get one day a women's main event at WrestleMania. And the final one was about the had superb wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd as Dana Brooke defeated Paige. In 12.53 with a Simone driver following interference from Chris Wolf. A B-75 there. I'm wondering how that got that. Despite them having great chemistry, boosting Dana Brooke to an 89 performance in page in 82. I guarantee when we get to the dirt sheet, not just a short cap match. I was thinking the storyline was going to affect it. If they're getting performances like that, surely one day they could maybe get that to a B- a B plus or an A. Who knows? But young enough. There's still time. So, a little tag team match. No titles in the line. But we had a, a match that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. And it saw the winners of the Tag Team Invitational, DIY, defeat the Young Bucks, the Road Brothers, and the Masters of Wrestling. In the 15-23, when Tommaso Champa defeated Dustin Rhodes, the Project Champa. Dustin Rhodes being the weak link because of his age. But b one's good. The storyline continues for the SmackDown side of things because of Hero and Cesaro. They've brought out dynamite performances when 89 and 90. Really, really, really are doing so well as a tag team. Um, and they aren't even getting the great chemistry boost. So if they had that, God knows what ratings they'd be drawn. But everyone else was good there. Cody Rhodes 81, Matt Jackson 86, uh, even Gargano and Champa, who have really, really gained over this thanks to that win. In the tournament. So a few negatives there as expected, declining physical ability, but Cesaro still will perform pretty damn well. So into the semis we go. In a decent matchup we saw Kellyanne English defeat AJ Lee in 11-15 with the Roaring Bicep. So a B-76 there. Kellyanne with a weaker performance than AJ. A good win as we have really shown that Kellyanne English is here to stay. She's number one contender and she could Dominate this whole tournament to prove why she is that number one contender. She enters the final. Then of a promo from Dana Brooke, she says she's proved she is one of the most dominant females there is. A former champion, current tag champion. She's going to win this. She's going to get the number one contendership, and she's going to win her title belt. The fact that Triple H introduced her just shows how important and how mega she is. So a ninety there, great promo from. Dana Brooke. Would have thought this in real life. I know it's, it's madness. Next up was a match that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Charlotte defeated Dana Brooke in 13:39 by pinfall with a fast roll up. So somehow she's managed to get the win over Dana Brooke. B minus 76 there, an 84 performance for Dana, a 72 for Charlotte. Charlotte has somehow sustained conjunctivitis, we'll go with. Okay, because that will happen in a wrestling match. Okay, uh, but uh, a couple of negatives there. Booking decisions. Charlotte somehow shocks her way into the final. It is going to be that long-standing rivalry we've had on SmackDown Live between Charlotte and Kelly and English that will main event the women's tournament here today. So Charlotte wins. Cheers for letting us know on, and after the matchup, Kelly and English runs down, and she just beats the crap out of Charlotte, just saying, you know, yeah, I'm going to be the champion, I'm going to win this, you're not, you know, taking the victory here, and that was a B-plus 88, so a good angle there, gets a bit of heat to the storyline, and Kelly and English come out of it looking a million bucks. Match itself. Done the job. Charlotte was slowed down by injury, so that's a bit disappointing. Um, at least she's able to wrestle through it, so hopefully it doesn't harm her in the future. Turned out to be a good matchup. 
and Charlotte picked up the win, defeating Kayla in English in 1914 by pinfall, winning the Mae Young Classic. So we've given it to Charlotte. I feel like I've never really utilised her well in this save, and I feel like it's time for the Queen to basically take her throne. So she will be in the championship match at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. The plan is to go Kayla in English, Charlotte, Mia Yim, Triple Threat for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. But B82, Charlotte by 72, that would maybe been a bit better. The storyline advances though. No skill improvements. And Kelly English was a bit unhappy after this match because she was very reluctant to put Charlotte over. Um, I'm sure a wee bonus will, will keep her happy. So a decent co main. Charlotte celebrates. That gets an absolutely amazing A91. So she's definitely boosted her overness which is good to see. Obviously, we'll check after the event if her overness and if Keller English's overness had really rocketed to levels of, of Dana Brooke. Then uh, Dean Ambrose promo, just hyping up basically the main event. Obviously, he's this long-running feud with Roman Reigns after turning on him. Roman just can't get his hands on him, and Dean Ambrose is just like, well, you know, cool. You know what I mean? I was the leader of the shield. Everything's Roman this, Roman that. And he's going to prove, you know, that, you know, Dean Ambrose is a man not to be taken lightly around here. So A Star 95, good promo from Dean. The matchup has to try and draw about an A plus to make sure we get a successful show here. 89, it's okay. I think we might be looking at about an 87 kind of rating show here. It was an exceptional matchup, just like the baby faces win. So Brian, Reigns, Rollins, Strickland, and Kota Bushi. Defeat the team of Ambrose, Jinder Mahal, Braun Strowman, The Miz, and Samoa Joe in 22:38. When Roman Reigns defeats Jinder Mahal by pinfall. 89's good. This is with Roman off his game. Give an idea of performances. Ibushi 92, Strickland 187, Seth at 89, so we're slowly building him back up. Reigns with 96, and that's him off his game, so Reigns is really over. Brian with 93, Joe with 93, 89 for The Miz. 87 for Braun Strowman, 95 for Ambrose, and a 93 for Jinder Mahal. A lot of these guys, it's going to be hard to pick a field of 16, but will be involved in the Grand Prix, or the, yeah, the World Grand Prix or King of the Ring. So I'm probably thinking these 10 guys, maybe adding in Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, Kevin Owens, and whoever else we can fit in that's got a good level of it's probably Bray Wyatt, Bo Dallas would be good shouts as well. So a couple of skill improvements here, a few negatives to be expected. John Cena, how can we forget Big Match John in that tournament? And we finish the show with Jinder Mahal being attacked by Reigns and Rollins, just basically so the crowd go, yay! Unfortunately, it did only get a B plus 86, but Jinder Mahal and Roman Reigns were a real star in this segment, so they're looking like a million bucks, and Seth Rollins not so much, but hopefully, as I say, we get a good rating. I'm, a, I'm assuming we're going to get a message saying we've pushed Nicky Cross too much. And, you no, know, it's just a B87, so it's not a show that gets his pop increased because of obviously not a strong co main, but I'm still happy with it. It's like, the main thing is it's a showcase of the women athletes that we have on our roster, and it just shows, you know, that, you know, we can bring some really good matches. The fact is, we had, what, one. Two, three, seg three or four segments that were less than 70, which I think, considering how low and overness the way they started in the game, um, and the fact now we've only had our change in product to integrated division to give them that push to the main event for roughly about five months. As I say, it's a good way of showing that they've came a good way and they can just get better and better. So they're no longer capped. Hopefully, they can keep improving. Uh, B plus 87 for the Mae Young Classic. You damn right we're aiming for that A next year. So great show there. I think we have to give the props to Kelly and English and Charlotte. Praise Bo for a good performance. We'll take it back to the home screen. And what I'm going to really check is basically how much um, overness everyone's gained from the show. Um, if it's going to help our women athletes going forward. So I say no pop, but that's, it doesn't really matter in that kind of regard. If we just quickly go to size, we'll, we'll go back to that. It's really just a case of us working in Puerto Rico, the tri-state in the southeast. It's hard because we don't have raw US television, but we're still by far the biggest company in the, the world. 402 million in the bank, you know, we're, we're fine. And that's us having given 
two million worth of um, bonuses to everyone to keep them happy this month. So that's why we're minus as much. But we're making roughly ten million a, a month still. Our finances are absolutely fine. It's it's no issues there. The company's not going to go bust anytime soon. So we'll just have a look at the messages. And um, beautiful bees contract and developmental is up 27 years of age mm, we might give her a chance in the main roster i don't know what we'll do with her and um, but we'll maybe give her another name unless she wants to stay in developmental we'll maybe just keep her down um, and see how she does with which underground if that gets her overness up becky lynch wants a better push does that mean she's gained a good bit of overness 62 not a great big push but we'll, we'll, we'll get her up a little bit there we'll see what the injury, how long that will affect Charlotte. Kella in English obviously was fatigued by so many matches, that's understandable. 4,000 drug test, and Chris Wolf needs to learn to sell, says Caristico. And we got a 36.58 rating on TV. I'm going to keep that there so don't forget to do Beautiful Beast contract. Sarah Del Rey. Uh, there's that temptation just to retire and give, uh, unretire her and give her just a, a quick run. Uh, on the main roster, I just give everyone the, the big contract just to I'm happy. So titles, let's just have a quick look. Me Young Classic, it's up to a 78. So in terms of prestige, that's gained a good bit from that matchup. So you get Shasha Banks and Charlotte as the winners there. So that's good prestige for that championship belt. And last but not least, as I say, we'll just quickly check the overness to see how it has changed for the ladies. Anyone's had great improvements. So Abby Leif is still at the 44 mark. Uh, but we'll be skipping out a few people uh, and just featuring on the competitors. Ando wasn't in it. That's cool. AJ Lee up to a 55. So did she make decent gains? Let's have a quick look. She gained five. So that's a, a good start for AJ Lee. I want to do try and give her that push because she's been neglected. No Alexa Bliss. People are thinking, how could you leave a lot of Miss Bliss out of the tournament? There's got to be a lot of pissed off people missing the tournament. These have got to get storylines going forward on Raw and SmackDown. So hopefully we can use Alexa's frustrations to, to push her forward. Obviously the likes of no Apple Miyake, no Nakajima, no Asuka. I think basically Asuka's done. Um, but again, we could maybe work her up as a vicious heel, seeing why I've never been utilised. Bailey stays at about a 58. Becky is a size of 62, so she wants to move up to an upper mid, so that's fine. That's okay. Billy K 62 as well. She done pretty well. Obviously we'd no Candice, we'd no Carmella. Here's your winner. Charlotte has holy smokes leapfrogged like hell. She's up to a 77. So it just shows when you book someone's really strong in one show, a couple of wins. She has gained 16 overness from those four victories. So Charlotte has got Dana Brooke like levels of overness. If we could work hard and we can keep working people with those kind of pushes to get to that next level. Cherry Bomb wasn't on it, neither was Crazy Mary. Dana may have took a bit of a hit from losing to Charlotte. Has she hell? She's still over as hell. So if we've done a proper program between Dana Brooke and Charlotte, she's actually gained pot in places. Jesus Christ. If we've done a push between the two of them, a few between them, we could possibly see that A match. And Dana Brooke could have been a part of that. Wow. Obviously, Demi Bennett wasn't in the match. I may change her name. Um, still, really, might change her to Rhea Ripley like real life. We'll, we'll see. November Moon. Emma wasn't in it either, so maybe she'll come out a bit frustrated. No Eva Marie. No Evie, unfortunately. I do want to use her. I may even rebrand her as Dakota Kai. Or Dakota Kai, I think her name is. How did the Kelly English's skills go? Not much of an increase for Kelly in English, which is very surprising. So she's still a main eventer. She's 69 over still. And if we look at her popularity in terms of progress, she actually lost because of that loss to Charlotte. Still a great position to be in, as I say, she's 26, so she can take plenty of time to get to that next level. So still happy with that. Chris Wolf is roughly about the same. No Lana, no Liv Morgan. Again, Liv could be one of those ones that's pissed off. No Mandy Rose, no Maxine or Megan Kate. Melissa's down to 60s, so that was not good for her. Losing, if I just hit the wrong button there, losing to, as I say, Charlotte. She did not really lose to a free over so the good thing is she's got great wrestling skills and a good solid program on Raw will continue to boost her up. Mia Yim, 70s and decent performance uh, skill levels and everywhere else. I think with her, um, yep, she did take a bit of a hit in that tournament. But as I say, it's built up on her character. She's only 30. She can definitely get back up to a high level. 
no Mickey in the tournament, or Michaela or Nia Jax. Nicole Matthews was a first round loser. Good news for Nikki Cross, up to 44 and 45 overness. Gave her a little boost of 20 over in that tournament there, so 1 1 over Peyton Royce did well, and a good showing against AJ. We're going to unleash the sanity, she's going to get a good run. Um, main roster, get ready, because she is quality. Page 65 odds, that's still good. Peyton Royce, I think, took a big hit on the loss to Nikki Cross, down from 50, so she lost the 8 over. Um, we could use that. Maybe Turner use its fuel, uh, fuel to give her a, a push and a nasty streak going forward. Maybe Sky, things will happen. Ronda's just going to get released soon. Sasha's probably at the same kind of level she's always been at. Not a massive showing for her. In fact, actually, her match gained her pop. So, um, well done, Sasha. Maybe it's just some cases the exposure either does them the world of the good or the, the world of the hurt. And Sienna lost, and the other three. Unfortunately, we just couldn't fit them in, but we will do something like the Tony Storm. It's just all about finding the right time and place. It's a stacked roster, and um, I just kind of booked four shows in one week, so that's how there's a hesitance to do an all-female show again, where we opted for 205 Live. And because the product requires two hot women, to, or two eye candy, however they describe it in-game, to all the females. So, a long-ass video, but it is done. I hope you did enjoy the May Young Classic. The Queen is the most over- women on Smackdown Live. What will happen one day if her and Dana Brooke do clash? You know, could we see the, the mega match down the line? Royal Rumble? WrestleMania? Who knows? But a lot of exciting things to come from our female athletes and we do have a lot of good ones and I say quite a good few who haven't even had an opportunity yet and a lot who are still in developmental so promising things for our women's division. But I say that's it for this episode. Next week We'll have the preview video for the World Grand Prix of 16 of the main wrestlers in the WWE. The top guys, those people who have grasped, grasped the brass ring, will compete to see who's the king of the kings. With the two stellar winners of the tournament so far, just Daniel Bryan and John Cena with a prestige of A100. It's much more highly rated than King of the Ring, which is why it's the World Grand Prix. Our former G1 climax before I realised. 19 shows is a bit too much for YouTube, so we just do the simple and the wrestlers as well. It's so just a one off night, same as everything else. One off tournament, a lot of long matches, probably will take a six or seven hour show in game. So, see guys, thanks for watching. Let I me mean, know you thought the winner. Are you quite happy that Charlotte won? Do you feel like she's overexposed in real life? And why, you know, that's maybe why I've kind of went stale on her on here before now, allowing everyone else to get some wins? Or do you feel she really is the best they have on the WWE roster? As always, thanks for watching guys. Any comments, likes, subscriptions, they're all deeply appreciated. As always, you can catch more guys on the Grey Dog Software forums for the likes of more written diaries, for some mods, and for some graphic stuff as well, and a lot of good help on there. And don't forget the Fancy Booker subreddit. There's a lot of more written content, and there's a lot of very, very fucking good YouTubers on there as well. If you want to check them out, drop them a little sub, a little like. Let's get this community close as ever. But again guys, thanks for watching, please enjoy the rest of your day, and I shall see you next time for the WWE World Grand Prix. See you later.